What up, dude bros? I'm Frank. This is a video review of the Nerf Zoom Scope. This scope made by Nerf is retailing for about 50 US dollars. It has a 5X digital zoom as well as a night vision element. Definitely a hefty price tag at 50 US dollars. Is it worth it for the super elite tacticians out there? Let's find out. Included is lay scope and the instructions. This is a battery powered product that must have the batteries to do absolutely anything. You can't even look through the item without like batteries. To get to those, you take off the single Phillips screw on the outside, take off the battery plate and install four AA alkaline batteries. So to overview the product, I'll go over sort of the basics of how it works. Pretty much there's a camera up front and a little monitor or TV screen in the center. So the camera, when you turn it on, is just live feeding all of the camera feed into the, the monitor in the rear. I'm gonna keep saying sensor and camera, but there is no way to record with this device. It's not like the Battle Scout device. This is only a live view only to act like a scope. But because it relies on that camera lens and a screen, there's no way to look through without the battery power on. It's like if you held up an iPhone with the camera mode and then you turned off the iPhone trying to look through the iPhone, that wouldn't make much sense. That's kind of the same thing here. So it's not really a scope in the traditional sense at all, but it's still pretty cool. So the power switch up on the top here, there are three settings, off, daytime, and nighttime. Off is obviously off. Daytime works very much like a traditional camera feed. Then the nighttime option has the night vision feature. First to cover the daytime feature, how that works. Again, there's a camera lens up front and a little monitor built in to the center. So when you turn on the scope, the camera is activated and it just has a live feed from the sensor directly to that monitor. There are no crosshairs on the screen or any type of aiming thing. This mount is not really accurate enough to like warrant that. And keep that in mind, even with the cool little tightening mech over here, it holds in place pretty well. It's not gonna fall off the blaster in my opinion, but it's not accurate enough to be a real scope. And I think the Hasbro guys knew that, so they didn't even bother putting crosshairs or anything to junk up the screen because it has pretty limited resolution. So the default setting is 1x zoom and if you want to zoom in or see the item larger you can hit the little top switch up here. You can zoom in and out with this. Again the, the default is 1 and you can go to 1.5, 2, 3, 4, and 5x like zoom. But keep in mind this is a digital zoom not an optical zoom. If you're a camera nerd that's a big deal. Just to point out the difference a digital zoom takes the existing image and simply makes it larger. They just stretch the image and they don't really add any new data. So if you have 10 pixels and you stretch it you're just going to have 10 really big pixels instead of more pixels and more data. And unfortunately the world doesn't work like NCIS would suggest and say, enhance that image, enhance that image. And then suddenly they created like a 4K image out of nothing. That is not how the real world works, unfortunately. You telling me television isn't real, Franklin? <laughs> Oh, yeah, sorry, bro. Unfortunately, somebody just added a blur effect and then wiped it off when the guy enhanced the image editing, they lie to you. I mentioned my concern about this being a digital zoom in my Toy Fair review of this product like ages ago, but it's not as big a deal as I was expecting because the screen is really low quality or low resolution. And the screen, funny enough, even has the pixels like separated by this black grid system. So you can like literally count the pixels on the screen, which is kind of funny. But because there are so few pixels and the screen is so low resolution, even the default 1X zoom isn't really that like sharp of an image. So when they blow it up, you can't really tell. But if you're looking at something far away or you're reading text through the screen and you get beyond the three, like to the three, four, or five X zoom, you can see that the digital zoom is kind of distorting the image a little. Am I being super nitpicky about this product? Absolutely, but it's a $50 scope, so yeah. As far as cameras go, that's inexpensive, but as far as Nerf attachments go, it's expensive. So of course I'm gonna be freaking detailed. It's not a Coop 772 review if I'm just like, oh, oh, it's good enough. It's good enough for whatever, buy it. <laughs> so that summarizes that. If you hold up your iPhone, you can accomplish pretty much the same thing. And Nerf even sells that mount for the iPhone that you can snap onto your rail and you're accomplishing the same thing. And with the digital zoom, if you do that, that little click drag thing with the iPhone or most smartphones, you can digitally zoom and that's accomplishing the exact same thing. So that's the daylight mode. It doesn't work like a traditional scope at all. It works more like, you know, a smartphone or a camera. It's just a live feed, camera sensor, monitor, boom, done. But for the tacticians out there, there's also a nighttime mode. You know, when you're operating low light, no light, oh yeah tactics, bro. This nighttime mode doesn't work like some night vision. There are different types of night vision technology. This one works on infrared. Infrared, or IR as the tacticians refer to it as, is electromagnetic radiation with a wavelength outside of our visible spectrum. So like it could be flying all over the air, actually boom, I'm actually emitting it from that, but I can't see that. Freaking wizardry with a cloaking charm. I know, right? It's freaking tactical. IR is emitted out of all sorts of stuff. I'm actually emitting it now. Our sun emits it. It's a form of energy, but it's not a visible wavelength. So I can't like see it with my naked eye. This camera is reliant on seeing the IR. And these little lights around the camera lens are IR emitters. So it's shooting out a bunch of infrared. And then the camera, because most cameras can detect this, is reliant on that. So you go into tactical night vision mode and the camera flips on its little sensor. It turns 
green for tactical mode. And then it's being more receptive to the IR in the area, which is pretty cool. Cameras have the ability to detect IR, but this camera is specifically set for it when you go into tactical night vision mode. I can't think of the perfect words to describe what infrared is and how the camera is receiving it. I'm sure SciShow has probably made some awesome episode explaining it, but sort of pretend like I have a flashlight and you can't see my flashlight. And my eyeball is the camera, and I have this flashlight that's freaking tactical and tuned only to my eyeball. How this is working is I turn on my flashlight so I can see, and my flashlight is lighting everything up, but all the little muggles around me can't see my tactical flashlight because they're, they're muggles. I turn off my flashlight or my infrared emitters and I am then blind again or it's dark. But because I'm a super elite tactician, I turn on my tactical flashlight and I can point it at stuff and see. That's what's happening here. It's shooting out a bunch of infrared and it's receiving the infrared. In the end though, the how the technology exactly works doesn't really matter because this camera doesn't do it very well. Very well though is all about your expectations. As far as like infrared cameras go, $50 is really inexpensive. As far as nerf attachment goes, $50 is freaking expensive. As far as Nerf guns go, $50 is expensive. So to spend 50 bucks on just a scope, that's a lot. So I was expecting it to work a little bit better in a way. So it's really limited. It's a low res camera. It's not a very big sensor. So there's not, it's not really collecting a whole lot of light. Everything I'm saying probably doesn't matter at all when you look at the examples. <laughs> For this tactical demo, I'm showing off this fancy looking chart I found in Google Images. As you can see, it's very grainy. You can actually see the pixels separated. That's 2x magnification, 3x. That's not digitally added by me. That is visible in the scope, the 3x, 4x, 5x magnification. As you can see, the resolution just isn't great. And I'll show a comparison of my camera just so you can kind of see what a, what a higher quality camera can actually resolve there. And if you don't care about the funny patterns, um, here's something that everybody knows and loves. <laughs> Dick butt. Yeah, get close. 5X close. Oh yeah. High quality time. Oh yeah. Now I'll show just a different format, a different scenario, so you, you can just see through the scope a little bit better. After you click it on, it takes a second. This is the boot up screen. And this is also a lower quality camera. This is just a GoPro, so it's also partially my recording. It's rather tricky to record a recording like this. That's a comparison naked GoPro. Then back into the camera there. That's my Nemesis down there. 1x magnification. Again, that's the default setting right when you turn it on. Zooming in a little bit, you can see the details in the blaster since Dick Butt in that weird chart. Maybe you don't know what to do with that data, so you know what a Nemesis is that's about 20 feet away, maybe. Are you going to need to read something on somebody's face before you take that shot? Probably not, but this is just a camera demo. It is just a monitor built into the scope, but it's not on the very back of the scope. It's kind of inset a few inches, so it does give that depth appearance or that, that feel to it, which is kind of interesting. You're very clearly looking down a tunnel. Now, tactical nighttime mode. This is just sort of the environment recorded on my GoPro, so you can see before I stick you right into the camera there. This is the daytime mode, not night vision tactical mode. I'm, I'm impressed with this. It's, it's blowing out the image and like I wouldn't want that as a professional photographer or anything because the ISO is crazy high but to result like to get that much detail with almost no lighting is actually kind of awesome and that's not in the tactical night vision mode. That is the tactical night vision mode as you can see it's actually harder to see at night with night vision on and that's because the IR emitters are around the light and it's just not reaching out that, to that 20 foot mark, but you can see the muzzle of my blaster is actually overexposed because the IR emitters are pushing all the IR, uh, the infrared onto that muzzle, so then it looks kind of blown out like a highlight in a normal photograph. And that's my hand again in front of the IR emitters, so it's getting overexposed. And this is just some creeper that was walking around my house. <laughs> 
the muzzle again is overexposed, but my body, it's, you can see me, but it's actually easier without night vision mode, which is just funny. Lay demo is concluded. So I put this blaster up on button chronograph and, wait, what? Super cool concept though. Even if it worked exceptionally well and it had like a thousand yard range, the realistic practicality of that would be questionable. It works well enough to be gimmicky and cool. So you're using it and you can like, oh, it's night vision, that's cool. You're better off using your naked eye and just detecting it. And funny enough, when you turn it into daylight mode, the camera overexposes the image and just cranks up the ISO. It's a super grainy image. And as far as like film quality goes, it's not great, but it's actually better at receiving light than the night vision mode, like at range, because the IR emitters aren't strong enough to push it out there. So overexposing in the daylight mode actually works better than the night vision mode in that extreme dark environment, which I found Hilarious, like almost making the night vision option pretty much useless. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, super long section on the camera because that's, you know, important. It is a scope and that's what it's doing. Scoping with the camera. Scope, that's a verb now. Went over the zoom, it is a digital zoom button. Lay bummer, but as I mentioned, the monitor makes it not as noticeable. But again, it's not noticeable because they totally nerfed the primary image. I just use nerf as a Whoops. They totally like softened that initial image. So then when they blew it up, you couldn't really tell. So is that cheating kind of? And that's such an appropriate place for nerf as in like how the general public uses the word. Totally nerf the battle rifle. What a bunch of scrubs. <laughs> but yeah, and another feature to point out is the little latching mechanism. Now this is an in-strike attachment. So it goes on to in-strike tactical rails, but because it's a little heavier and it's certainly more valuable, they put on a little latch to tighten it and it clamps down a little bit tighter than normal. And that works surprisingly well. It does tighten up a little bit more. Um, even with it completely unlocked, it's still a total pain to get off the regulator because the new version of the little attachment teeth no longer have springs. So they're just like, yeah, you're gonna have to rip this crap off, but at least it's secure, right? So overall opinion on the zoom scope. Now, practically speaking, a zoom on a Nerf blaster just isn't helpful to me, but it is pretty cool just to have that feature. Like if you're into the gimmicky stuff and you just wanna have that feature, it works. It's not exceptionally high quality, um, but you know, it has a different form factor. Again, if you have a smartphone, Nerf actually sells the iPhone mounts, or it might be the iPhone a few generations ago, but it's doing pretty much the same thing. It has a camera and a monitor. So that might be an easier option and you can always hit record on your smartphone or snap pictures. This has no recording uh, capabilities at all. And the sensor in your iPhone, especially if you have a current generation iPhone is far superior to this. Not that this is total crap. As far as toy grade cameras go, it's reasonable. Smartphone cameras are becoming ridiculous. Like they're better than professional cameras from like 10 years ago. Not in sensor size, but as far as overall build quality, Never mind. But you can check out that example footage I showed to really make up your mind yourself there. I think $50 is a lot for an attachment, especially Air Warriors just released that thermal scope, which is just as gimmicky, but that was 25 US dollars. Oh, by the way, it had a blaster attached to it. This is 50 US dollars just for the scope, which is expensive as crap for just an attachment. And it's something that doesn't really add anything to your nerfing game other than a tactics to run your night vision. It'd be sweet if they then sold a head mount so you could like flip it down like your, your nods. Gotta go freaking tactical mode. If it came with the sound effect, you know what I'm talking about. The freaking operator. <laughs> But it only comes with the scope itself, not a blaster or anything else like that. But if you're gonna run like operator style night vision, you're obviously gonna be running three round burst like a freaking operator. So regulator only, holy freaking operator. Now I just need like a, another tack light. You should have put side rails on the regulator like the modulus, bros. I'm missing my tactics. Need more tactics. I need like three or four of these night vision. I wonder if I could stack them and get infinite five times five. Super long digital zoom, assuming I could line them all up. Super awesome tactical low light. Oh man, maybe for a future episode, the world's longest Nerf blaster, all those modulus with a bunch of the night vision. How cool would that be? That'd be an expensive blaster. Nah, I can't buy more than one of these. This is a stupid long video for what I covered. That's it. Thank you so much for watching, bros. Let me know what you think of this product. Are you gonna go out and buy it? At what cost would you go buy it? If it were $10, would you buy it? 20, 30, seven? Let me know in the comments. I'm really curious. Thanks so much for watching, bros. And as always, stay tactical.